An arithmetic logic unit typically has a series of status flags. So these indicate when particular situations occur after an operation has been carried out. They may, all, they may not apply for all operations and all different number types. So the typical flags that we see are C. So this tells us that a final carry out has been generated. V, when overflow has occurred. N, when the ALU output is negative. And Z, when the ALU output is zero. So these flags are used in an ARM Cortex M3 microprocessor core and are stored in a special status register. So the carry flag is simply the final carry out of the ripple carry adder that's in the arithmetic unit. But it's important to note that the carry out flag is meaningless when we're considering signed numbers. So the carry out only applies for unsigned numbers. And it also only applies for the arithmetic operations. So when we are doing the logical operations with the arithmetic logic unit, the carry out flag is meaningless and can be ignored. So the carry out flag is another output of the arithmetic logic unit and comes out directly from the arithmetic unit. Now, when we're adding together sign numbers, a situation known as overflow may occur. So if we consider a 4-bit sign number, we know that it can take a value in the range minus 8 to plus 7. But if the, if the result goes out of this range, we end up getting the wrong answer. So if we consider we just did the case of 7 plus 1, we know obviously we should get an answer of 8, but 8 is outside, well positive 8 is outside of this range and so overflow occurs. So overflow is typically labelled as V because of the obviously the letter V in the word overflow. But similar to carry being meaningless for signed numbers, overflow is meaningless for unsigned numbers. So overflow only applies to signed numbers and again it only applies to arithmetic, arithmetic operations. So it does not apply to the logical operations in the arithmetic logic unit. So we'll look at some examples now of overflow. So suppose we was doing this sum. So we know that looking at these, they're both positive numbers. You can see the sign bit is zero. So no, here we've just got seven plus two. So we actually, but when we actually do this, op, uh, this addition, Using the arithmetic log unit, we'll get 1 and 0 is 1. 1 and 1 will give us 0, carry 1. Then this 1 and 1 will give us another 0 and the carry 1. And then that carrying that final common will give us this. But we know when we look in terms of sign numbers, remember this is for sign numbers, this column is worth minus 8 and 4, 2, 1. We have to end up with the answer minus 7, so we end up with minus 8 plus 1 gives us minus 7, which is obviously incorrect. And the situation can occur for subtraction as well. So we've got minus 8, minus 2 in this example, so we can tell these are negative numbers by looking at the sign bit of 1. So we know, and again, using these values here, we know that this top number is just minus 8, and then we're it. So this is minus 8 plus 4 plus 2 will give us minus 2. So here we're doing minus 8 plus minus 2. So again, um, when we do the actual sum that will be done by the arithmetic logic unit, 0 and 0 will give us 0. 0 and 1 will give us 1. 0 and 1 will give us 1, 1 and 1 will give us 0, and a carry that will go into this column here. So you can see we ignore this final carry when we're doing signed addition and subtraction. So this is our final answer, which is 
positive 6, so the sine bit here is 0, so another sine bit is a positive number. So minus 8 plus minus 2 gives us 6, which is clearly incorrect. So we're a little more closer, and we can see that overflow occurs when the result moves across the uh, 0111 and 1000 boundary. So when we go across here, because you see, before this, we've got all the positive numbers 0 to 7, and then we've, below that, we've got minus 8 to minus 1. So all the negative numbers, and we can see that's obviously caused by the sign bit here. So for the ones above, the sign bit is 0, meaning it's positive. And then these ones here, the sign bit is all 1, meaning, meaning it's negative. <clears throat> so, so overflow occurs when we cross this boundary. So you can see, you know, we can either go when we're going this way, that, or this way. Every time we do uh, some kind of operation that crosses that uh, boundary, overflow will occur. And it results in situations like the ones shown at the bottom here. So we, if you do a positive plus a positive, and you get a negative answer, that's clearly wrong because you can't add two positive numbers together and get a negative. So that's clearly a wrong situation when overflows occurred. And if you do a minus plus a minus, you know the answer should get more negative. But so if you end up getting a positive, that's also an incorrect situation. A positive subtracting a negative should get more positive, should get bigger. So it ends up being negative. Obviously something has gone wrong there. And the same, you've got a negative number, and you subtract a positive number, it should get even more negative. If it ends up being positive, then overflow occurred. So these four situations here highlight the scenarios in which overflow occurs, and they correspond to crossing this boundary here between the positive and negative numbers. So we can actually draw this as a circle. So these are the this circle is split into different segments with a binary values are on the outside and then the assigned number representations in the middle and this this dot dash line along here shows this boundary so when, we, when we're doing addition we're going to be going clockwise around here so we know if we do if we want to start at one for example we do one plus two so we've got one two that obviously gives us our answer of three if we do subtraction that's when we're going the opposite way so we're going to go um, anti-clockwise, so say we did uh, minus 3, minus 3, we'd do 1, 2, 3, would give us minus 6, which is obviously the correct answer. But you can see with overflow, the problem occurs when we cross this boundary. So for example, if you did 5, if you want, well, the 5 plus 4, we'll get 1, 2, 3, 4. So that will give us an answer of minus 7, which is clearly incorrect. And again, we could do um, minus 5, we want to do subtraction, minus 5, minus 4. So instead of giving us minus 9, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. We get positive 7. So anytime you do an addition or subtraction and you cross this boundary, overflow occurs so we can look at the situations which overflow occurs and they're going to be highlighted in this full added truth table here so we're just going to consider now the full adder just for the sign bit so we saw in the previous situation in the previous slide <coughs> these four scenarios here so we look here. So these, this is, so these are the situation where overflow occurs for addition are marked in these lines here. So if you, when the A and B, so these are the sign bits, because this is the full adder for the most significant bit in the ripple carry adder, which is the sign bit. So when A and B are both one, that means A. They're both negative, so if you do a negative plus a negative, but we get a um, positive answer given by the sum, we know that um, overflow has occurred. And similarly, if we look 
when A and B the sign bits are zero, that means A is positive, B is positive, but the sum sign bit comes out to be um, a one. That means there's something negative. So you can't if you got a positive plus a positive and give you a negative, you know that's the correct incorrect. So that means all the four have occurred. So these two rows here correspond to the situations in which overflow occurs by looking at these sign bits. And we can also note here, if we have to look at these columns, so this bit is a carrying column and this is a carry out column. So we can see that overflow occurs when actually the carry in and carry out bits are different. So in both of these cases, when overflow occurs, the carry in and the carry out are different. So obviously in this case, it's a zero and the carry out's a one. In this case, the carry in's a one and the carry out's a zero. So the cases in which overflow occur, the carry in and carry out bits are different. And we can actually detect this using an XOR gate. So if you remember from the XOR truth table, so if we got um, so A, B, and then A exclusive or B. So just if you just think from the XOR truth table, so zero, one, and zero. So we know the output of an XOR gate is a one when the inputs are different. So in both of these situations here, the inputs are different. And so we can use an XOR gate so we can feed in the carry in bit and the carry out bit and when they are different it means that overflow has been detected so we get our ripple carry adder and we're just going to add on this overflow detector circuit on the output so we can see this this XOR gate so one of the inputs is just the carry in for the final carrier because it's remember for sign numbers this this is going to be the sign bit So we're going to feed in the, the carry in into the sign bit and then the carry out. And we can see from this table, when those two bits are different, it means overflow has occurred and this output will become a one. So we can just update our top level circuit diagram again. So now we just added on this extra flag here. So the carry and the overflow come from the arithmetic unit. So the uh, carry is for unsigned numbers. And the overflow is for signed numbers. So that's two of our flags. The next flag is a zero flag, and that's very easy to detect because we, we just need to look on the output bus. And we just need to look when all the bits on that bus are a zero. And we can very easily detect that using a NOR gate because this is this is the um, this is a NOR gate truth table. So A or B and the output inverted to give you a NOR. So you can see with with a NOR gate, the output is a one only when both inputs are zero. And we can ex extend that for a NOR gate with more than two inputs. So you have to need for a four bit LEU, you'll need a four input NOR gate to detect this zero bit. So we can just, on our output then, we can just get the four bits on the output bus, separate them into their individual bits, feed them into this NOR gate, and then the Z, it, Z output will be a one, so the flag will be set when the output is zero. So the final flag and the negative flag is even simpler to implement. So the negative flag is essentially just the sign bit of the output bus. So the most significant bit of the output bus, because we know with signed uh, numbers, the sign bit is zero when it's a positive number. So we know zero means positive and the sign bit of one means negative. So we just tap off the most significant bit or the, the sign bit of the output. It'll just be a zero when it's positive or one when it's negative but it's you need to remember 
that the negative flag is irrelevant when we're considering unsigned numbers. Because un unsigned numbers cannot be negative, they can only be zero or positive numbers. It, you know, it might also be meaningless for purely logical operations. We might not want, we, you know, we're just doing a logical operator. We might not care that the um, eight put is negative. So we can just add on this extra bit for the final flag. So here we just got, we just split the bus into its four parts. So that's if this is the, so the zero here is marking the least significant bit. The negative flag will just be the most significant bit. What will just tell us whether it's positive. Or negative. So by adding these four extra output bits to our LU, because they're complete LU, so we've got our uh, two input buses, then we've got our different control bits to select which operator to do. We've got a final output bus, what gives us the answer, but then now we've got these four output flags, which you know they inform us that certain situations have occurred during the operation. So now we've got this updated LU diagram, uh, two input buses, eight put bus, control bits, and then the four eight put flags.